Local support for New Six has been provided by the Northwest Ohio Educational Technology Foundation, Bowling Green State University, and the members of WBGU TV. Hi, I'm Ryan Benrook from Columbus Grove Elementary School. Welcome to News 6. With today's first story, here's Christy Thiesing. For our first story today, News 6 visited Hartman Sons Funeral Home where we learned about the responsibilities of the funeral director. Here's Michael Oglesby with the story. Thanks, Christy. I'm Michael Oglesby here with Len Hartman, the funeral director. Lynn, when did you decide to become a funeral director? Shortly after graduation from college, when I returned home and I worked with my family uh, in the business. Lynn, how has the funeral business changed over the years? Uh, in the last 20 years, there have been many significant changes, uh, not the least of which is an increase in cremation, probably due to economic factors. Uh, also, we're doing more prearranging of funerals today. Lynn, who started Hermanson's funeral home? I'm the fourth generation in Hartman Sons Funeral Home, and my great-grandfather, John Hartman, started it, passing it on to Richard Hartman, my father, and my, great, and my grandfather, Jay Hartman. Not that I'm in the market for a casket, but could you like, tell me about this one if it's still walnut? Sure, Michael. This happens to be a hardwood walnut casket. Uh, by the way, it's a half couch, that is only one half of the lid opens. There are also full couch caskets used in certain uh, areas of our country. It has a velvet interior and what we call a swing bar handle here, and this is so that the pallbearers can carry the casket, such as when you're taking the casket from the hearse to the grave site. Uh, the casket doesn't seal. I can show you here that that's just all solid wood. But the burial vaults, for the most part, most of them are a sealer type. Lynn, in general, what are these caskets made of? Caskets are made of different materials, Michael. Some of them are constructed of metal, like copper, bronze, and there are also steel, including stainless steel caskets. Uh, some of them are hardwood. Thanks, Lynn, for letting us come out here and take this, and I hope I don't see you again for quite some time. Michael, you're very welcome. Back to WBGU TV. Today's News 6 is produced by the 6th grade class of Columbus Grove Elementary School. Columbus Grove is located approximately 16 miles north of Lima, Ohio and it's a population of about 2,300. For our next story, today News 6 spoke with Sharon Hayden, who started making gifts for friends and family and turned it into a business. Here's Erica Miller with the story. Thanks, Brian. Hi, I am Erica Miller, and I'm with Sharon Hayden, owner of Hayden's Gifts and Flowers. How'd you get started in your business? Well, basically, I just had a new baby at home, and I wanted to do something that I could work at home, so I started doing things for my family and friends, and they thought this was so great that I had to go into business. What are some of the flowers you sell in your store? Most of what we sell here is the silk flowers, where people come in, bring a little bit of wallpaper, and uh, then we'll match that to the flowers and do up a special arrangement for the room. So predominantly, it would be like the roses and lilies and things in the silk. What are some of the items you sell in your store? Besides fresh and silk flowers, we sell a lot of porcelain dolls, special gifts, Victorian ideas, little baskets for the wall. People come in and ask for special orders. We'll make them up a big garland or a fireplace mantle piece. A lot of, a lot of different things. Sharon, what is a silk flower? A silk flower is something that's been fabricated by, by, by I suppose, by hand. And uh, it's made to look like a real flower. How do you keep your flowers fresh? We have a cooler in the back, Erica. It's much like, like a refrigerator, and that's how we keep them fresh. 
What are some of your busiest seasons? Our busiest holiday is Christmas. People come from all over to come to our Christmas open house. If I had a boyfriend, would it be okay to give him flowers? It's an excellent idea, Erica. Um, today it's, it's considered in very good taste to send men and boys flowers. Thank you, Sharon. It's been a lot of fun and educational. You're welcome, Erica. It was my pleasure. Back to WBGU. The issue of abortion strikes a very passionate chord in so many people. Everyone has strong pro-choice or pro-life opinions. Today's kid view, Kids View Questions discovers how the sixth graders of Columbus Grove Elementary School feel about the issue. Hi, this is Beth Fickle, and today's kids' question is, yes, even sixth graders think about this. Should abortion be illegal? I think abortion should be illegal because what if the um, parent who was aborting their kids stopped and thought, what if they were aborted? Yes, I think abortion should be legal because every living thing should have a chance to live. Yes, I think abortion should be legal because even if you don't want the kid, you should at least give it up for adoption. Yes, I think abortion should be illegal because everyone should have a chance to live. For our last story today, News 6 takes a look at an important step in stopping the spread of HIV, the virus that causes AIDS. That step is education. Kurt Fort Here's Kurt Fortman with the story. Thanks, Matt. I'm Kurt Fortman here with Linda Fortman for the Teen Age Education Project. Let's listen in. AIDS is a disease that we hear about almost every day. But there hasn't been a disease in the history of our nation that's been surrounded by so much fear. And that's because there's so much wrong information. AIDS education is important because we need to get the facts out so we can stop the spread of this disease. Linda, what is the Teen AIDS Education Project? The Teen AIDS Education Project is a project whereby we use teens to teach other teens about HIV and AIDS. We're doing this project because uh, we found that teens in area counties were not receiving the education they needed when it came to AIDS, and also because people get really uncomfortable when they have to talk about AIDS. Linda, how does someone get infected with HIV? In order for somebody to get HIV, the virus that causes AIDS, inside their body, they need to get one or more of these four body fluids right inside them. And those are semen from the man during sexual intercourse, breast milk from the mother, vaginal fluids from the woman during sexual intercourse, and also from blood. HIV is the virus that causes AIDS. But when HIV is in the body, it begins to break down the immune system. That's the system that fights off disease. Linda, I'm kind of curious. Is there a cure for AIDS? If not, will there be one? The only 100% guarantee that you're not going to become infected is by choosing not to be sexually active and not to use drugs. In 1993, uh, we still have a lot of misinformation about AIDS, and there's a lot of fear. We still don't allow people to go to school, we don't allow them to go to church, we don't want them in their job because we're afraid of them. And the best way that we stop the fear is by getting as much education as we can and so that's what our project does. We're hoping to reach area teenagers with very important information so they can make wise decisions and wise choices to keep them from getting this virus. And that's all for now. Now back to you, WBGU. Thank you for joining us this season. Tune in next season when News 6 begins its 22nd year. Have a great summer. Support for News 6 has been provided by the Northwest Ohio Educational Technology Foundation, Bowling Green State University, and the members of WBGU-TV.